This Findings videocast is brought to you by the National Institute of General Medical Sciences, part of the National Institutes of Health. The Findings videocast series features the NIGMS-funded scientists profiled in each issue of the Findings magazine. I'm Alisa Mahalik, science writer at the National Institute of General Medical Sciences, and I'm here with Professor Eric Sorensen of Princeton University. He's a chemist who builds or synthesizes molecules that are found in nature. This field is called synthetic organic chemistry of natural products. Dr. Sorensen, can you tell us what is important about the field of synthetic organic chemistry? So a goal for the field is to, um, is to invent new chemical reactions that allow us to, uh, to make large amounts of things that are really important, molecules like taxol, for example. So they, they will often be scarce natural products, so they are not very available from their native habitat. And we are also interested in molecules where there's, there's, a, there's a gap in our knowledge about the properties of these molecules. Therefore, there would be an incentive to make, to make more of a certain type of molecule so that you might learn more about its properties. We have the ability to create not only the molecule that nature has already made, but we can create new molecules, molecules that never existed before. This is one of the things that make chemistry unique within the sciences. And what advice would you give for a student who is considering a career in chemistry? If I were a young person thinking that I would want to do chemistry as a profession, I would try to find a, a, a good laboratory experience at, at, at as an early stage as possible. Um, that would be advice I would give. It's, it's, um, it's a fantastically creative activity. And I think if, you, if you're a young person and if you get exposed to the, the creative side of chemistry, you'll get hooked. Um, it took me a while to get hooked. I didn't take chemistry seriously until I was in college, but once, once I did that, there was no going back. I thought I was going to medical school, but then I, I learned a little bit more about organic chemistry, and I mixed chemicals, and I got a few reactions that actually work, and um, that was it for me. That was the hook. Can you tell us some of the challenges or goals in your field? I would say we're still in that phase where we're good at making small amounts of complicated things, not so good at making large amounts of complicated things, and that's, that's a, a problem for the future. So there's also an opportunity to develop new ways to do chemistry uh, through catalysis, so using resources um, um, intelligently, using resources that don't, um, uh, using molecules that don't damage the environment and developing new catalysts that, that allow um, sophisticated chemistry to happen under, under, uh, under, under benign, gentle conditions. Dr. Sorensen, what are some of the most surprising or exciting things that have occurred in your career? So I would say nearly on a daily basis we're making, we're making um, kind of surprising discoveries about how molecules behave and how they, how they interact with each other. In, in the recent past we have become rather interested in trying to um, bring what we do to bear on this uh, on, on neglected diseases like malaria, and we do we are, we are actively pursuing laboratory syntheses of molecules that are known to have um, um, a high level of, of effectiveness in, in in the treatment of malaria and also tuberculosis. In, of course, you can plan research, but not the results. And 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 and, and work in this kind of field. Uh, can be slow and one has to have a lot of patience and um, and my graduate students and my postdoctoral co-workers they they are well aware that uh, it can take a while to uh, to figure out how to get molecules to dance to your tune okay. yeah. Dr. Sorensen thank you for your time today and best wishes in your research on chemical synthesis